Throughout the 1920s, the nightlife here glittered. Bands played, and liquor flowed, and everyone who was drinking it was breaking the law. In the first month of the new decade, the 18th Amendment became the law of the land. The sale and consumption of alcohol was now illegal. There was prohibition, but oddly enough, nobody uh, paid any attention to it. We went to people's homes. They served dreadful things called orange blossoms, which was gin and orange juice. Revolt. And bad gin at that. Liquor was now sold behind closed doors in places called speakeasies. Proprietors took the risks and reaped the profits. It was good money in them days. I was 15 years old. I was riding around with a Nash convertible. We had four speakeasies. One by the Daily News, one by the Daily Mirror. When you had a people, you let them in. Okay, a guy had to explain who he was, and he'd show you ID or something, and you let them in. You got to know it was like family after a while. Every corner had a saloon on it. Of course, you know they were never raided by. The cops were a big part of that business too. People wanted to drink. It was a great game. It became a dangerous game for the high-stakes players. Battles between rival gangs for control of illegal liquor territories riddled American cities with mushrooming murder rates. Prohibition's aim was to sweep liquor off the city streets. Now they were flooded with gangsters and guns. I used to carry two persuaders myself. You had to have them, <laughs> or else. Prohibition and the general disregard which followed it was the perfect symbol for the 20s, a decade which was about crossing the line, smashing tradition, breaking boundaries. As modern America came of age in the 1920s, boundaries of all sorts, technological, geographical, and social, were shattered. <laughs> 